Each unit of Civil War armies was a regiment. Uh, where, where are you from, Dansville? Yeah. All right. Dansville would have formed a regiment. I don't know which one, but you can probably find out. Uh, my Union characters in the 86 New York, Steuben County, and they formed a, a regiment called the Steuben Rangers. Each regiment went off to war. Each Union and each Confederate unit went off to war with the regiment. A regiment is 10 companies, 100 men each. Each regiment had a senior regimental officer with the rank of major. Sure. All right. This is the cap of a major. Now, do you notice what it says? It doesn't say U.S. It doesn't say CSA, does it? It says medical staff. Now, Fred, where's your frat coat? It says the same thing. It's here somewhere. His shoulder your boards yep. have his captain's bars and in between the embroidered MS. Now, I'm a medical officer in each army. Now, each regiment, and you're, you know, here in the 21st Georgia today, which we were until a few minutes ago, each regiment, thanks, Fred, each regiment will have a senior medical officer who will be a major. This is the first war in America in which America the American Army and both the Confederate Army commissioned their surgeons as officers. To hold this rank and maintain this rank, Fred and I had to pass a rigidly written medical board. The Union Army goes through the services of 12,000 surgeons during the war and sends half of them home as unfit. Major Jameson, my Union character, Major Capers in uh, Georgia, 21st Georgia. These men weren't prepared to deal with this sort of thing. They were country doctors. Medical school was two years. The same series of lectures, nine months, nine months later. Now, uh, the ones who made it, the half who made it in both armies, learned as they went. Both armies published step-by-step -step cookbook directions. Here's how you take off the finger. Here, here, and here. Here's how you take off the wrist here. Here's how you take off the form. You could read, you could learn, and after a while, after you've done enough of them, uh, the guys who really surfaced to the top were good. Now, when the, when the war first started, care was terrible. The regiment, just to flesh out the staff, would have a hospital steward. This is a man in private life who may have been a retail pharmacist. He understood drugs. The drugs weren't very good then. We only had about 10 drugs. But he understood drugs, and we would have sick call. Fred, if you bring the federal medical chest forward. Uh, we had about 10 drugs. Now, sick call is an interesting thing. Remember, we've got uh, two docs in charge of the health of the regiment. Fred's the assistant surgeon. Now, this is a Federal Army medical chest, the contents here. Now, what you see, uh, we have some that are very good. What do we got here, sir? We have quinine. This was excellent, both to prevent and treat malaria. What we have here is something that was well read from the federal formulary. It's called blue mass, mercury chloride, heavy metal poisoning in a pill. This was very, very popular. It was eventually removed about halfway through the war through both formularies. Now, um, what we've actually got here, we kind of made this like a tincture of uh, opium called laudanum for our patient, but it's actually iodine. I'll come back to that. Now, most days, the Union Confederate armies were on the march, or they were in camp. They weren't fighting. One or two days a month, they might fight. When the army was in camp, we'd have sick call every morning. Remember, when the regiment started out, there were a thousand men. So, you know, the guys have been in some bad water, they've been sleeping together, and they've got coughs, and they're transmitting diseases, so we might have a hundred boys lined up from here to the little knoll up there, the Golden Run. And uh, they'd come up, and I'd do sick call, or Fred Wood with, with John, well, soldier, what ails you? You might say, man, bowels, doc. I haven't gone in five days. Well, we're going to fix you right up. We're going to give you number nine. And I said, John, number nine. He'd tell you how to take it. Next. Now, I'm a 21st century physician. In the, in the 19th century, you might get a minute with him. No physical exam. You get number nine, you're gone. You, sir, what's the matter? Oh, doc, I got the run. Something fierce. Fred, we got something for that? <laughs> Where, well, oh, John, yep. okay. Christian's picked up his uh, opium pills. Yep. We'd give him narcotic. Work, work quite well. Now, uh, yeah, opium pills. Now, uh, and then we go through sick call. We might dispense with an entire sick call, 100 men, in less than an hour. And we do it every day. Now, some of the old soldiers who got the little white happy pills, the opium, would kind of keep coming back and we couldn't find anything wrong with them. So you had to kind of, you had to be a little bit cynical and dissect who needed you and who didn't. Now, that was sick call. 
Now, both armies in 1861 have horrible medical care. Have you boys walked the ground of Manassas? All right, you should. Manassas is a Union route. The battle's fairly close all day in the afternoon. The troops in the Shenandoah arrive by train. By the way, the first war in which the railroad was used to move armies. And the Federals stampede from the field in a panic. Remember, these boys have only been in the Army three months for either Army, so they're pretty green. Now, as they stampede, all the hired ambulance drivers from Washington don't want to be caught in this massive traffic jam. That's what they do. Just like you would do if there's a traffic jam coming, you get on the road early. <coughs> they left empty and went back to Washington. All of our Union casualties were abandoned on the field. Does that disgust you? It disgusts me. Our Surgeon General, William Hammond, for the Union Army, excellent man, the right man in the right position. He's got a broken system. Thousands of men are dying. Men are delaying on the battlefield even when the Union owns the battlefield afterwards for two and three days without being retrieved. All hope of saving them is gone. So what does he do? He names his surgeon, Jonathan Letterman, to be head surgeon of the Army of the Potomac. That's the army we think of here in the East, and the army of the 21st Georgia that was their antagonist for the war. He says, Dr. Letterman, you were chief surgeon in the Army of the Potomac. This is totally broken. Fix it. Letterman was a student of process, just like Clara Barton was a student of battlefield. She's a logistician. She's not a nurse. She gets supplies and stuff to the men who need them the cornmeal, the wine, the alcohol, the bandages, the lantern. She's an expert logistician. That is her true gift, and that works well on the Red Cross. Now, Letterman looks. First thing he notices, uh, yeah, medical staff's not bad, but the people retrieving the wounded from the, the field have no training. They're musicians, they're, they're convalescent soldiers, they're camp shirkers that they can't make do anything else or carry a rifle in combat. These are men with no qualifications whatsoever to do what they're being asked to do. So what does he do? Okay, we got to train an ambulance corps. And no, no system to retrieve the wounded, so what does he do? Have you boys been in the emergency room this year, last year, or the year before? You walk in the emergency room, who's the first person you see? You see the triage nurse, don't you? What does she do? You, sir, are pale gray ash and guy Freddy, like your friend's shirt, you look like a man. And you're gripping your chest, she says, sir, what's the matter? It's horrible chest pain. What's going on? You're probably having a, a Mont Carlo infarction, a heart attack. You're going to get a number one. You, sir, got bit by your dog three days ago. Your hand's getting a little red. You're going to get a number 10. You, sir, have a temperature of 104 and you're coughing up green oysters and it hurts like a booger when you breathe. What do you have in the morning? You're going to get a number two or three. Battlefield triage in the Civil War is very simple. Mark, you want to grab my canteen wherever it might be hiding? It's summer. Oh, it's on my hip. Never mind, Mark. <laughs> it's been a, long, been a long weekend, guys. <laughs> Sleeping here was fun last night at 35 degrees. <laughs> why do we sleep on the battlefield? To experience with the men who fought this war did. That's why we sleep on the battlefield. The same miseries, although our bedding's considerably better. Now, Letterman. Okay, we've got to have triage. Fred is an assistant surgeon. His role in the Union Army would be to be out behind the line of battle. He, let's say the line of battle is where those golden rods are on the knoll behind us. If you turn around and look about 30 yards, Fred's position is here. All wounded are brought to him. They're categorized in three levels. Mortal. Can't fix you in 1863. You're going to die. Walking wounded. Flesh wounded. Fred's going to get a bandage on there, get that bleeding stopped. He must get back in the hand and say, soldier, fight side away, have at him. Send him right back in the fight. Third category is going to be coming to me. What is my role in the Union and Confederate Army? I am the field surgeon. Now, you can imagine, you could have a little regimental hospital for each regiment. That didn't work. And the reason they found out it didn't work is you had to find the best surgeons. So here's how it works. Fred says, surgical case. It's like what you saw us chop off here. We're gonna have to see the surgeon. We have learned by bitter experience for 2,000 years, if you have a compound fracture, a penetrating wound, a broken bone, you leave that on in the air before antibiotics were invented, it's a death sentence. That soldier will die 100% of the time. He'll get an infection and he'll die. Now, so Fred's gonna summon the ambulance attendants. He's gonna say, this boy needs to go to the field hospital. After the first run, the ambulance attendant knows where that is, but just in case he doesn't, a hundred yards all the way down the road to the field hospital is a red flag on the tree. That's for his ability to find it. When he gets there, he will find this. 
this is a flag for a federal hospital or a Confederate hospital. He knows he's arrived. If we are very unfortunate, the battle goes against us and we're overrun by enemy troops, 